Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're talking about reliable messaging with our message brokers. And so what do we mean by reliability? When we build software systems, we obviously want them to be reliable. So if there's a failure somewhere in our system, we want the system to be able to come back, get back to a good state and carry on processing afterwards. And message brokers and the PubSub pattern can help us with that. So we've already talked about before that message brokers have storage. So in this example at the bottom, when application two is not running, application one can send messages to the broker. The broker can store them up. And then when application two comes back to life, it can connect to the broker and download the messages that, is, that are waiting for it. This means that we can tolerate application two being unavailable when we want to send it a message. So that gives us some reliability in terms of our processing. But what happens if application two fails while it's processing a message? So if we've got messages that are coming through our message broker uh, towards application two, uh, they're streaming through, number two gets received, and the application fails while it's processing, where does it go? Uh, we've got more messages that are coming through and they're being queued up by the message broker but with the storage as we've talked about. But when application two comes back, how does it carry on? Does it somehow still know about message two or does it get message three from the message broker? Kind of what's the process for that? Ideally, we don't want to lose any of our messages. Message two may have been really important, may have helped us close out a transaction or charge a payment or something like that. And so we don't really want to lose any of those, that information. So what we need is the, for the message broker to help us with that. So if application two fails while it's processing a message, ideally we want it to be able to come back to life and continue from the very same message. And so in order to achieve that, we would need our message broker to be able to deliver it again. But for that to work, what we'd have to be able to do is tell our message broker when we've successfully processed the message so it knows not to deliver messages to us again all of the time. So what we want is a system where we can download a message from the message broker and then process it. And when we've successfully processed it, tell the message broker we've successfully processed it so it doesn't deliver it to us again. But if we fail or disconnect from the message broker for whatever reason, uh, then when we connect back, if we haven't acknowledged the message, we want it to, be able to deliver that message to us again. And so we use a system like this, which we call acknowledgements to keep our messaging systems reliable. So when application two gets a message from the broker, it actually stays in the queue. The message gets locked, so other receivers don't also get a copy of that message. Um, and then when application two has finished processing the message, so here we see it processing, it generates an acknowledgement which it sends back to the message broker. And then that enables the message broker to remove that message from the queue and effectively like move all the other messages forward. So if we see what happens when application two fails, it starts kind of processing messages. These are coming into the message broker. They end up getting delivered to application two. It's processing them, but then it fails. That lock that we had on the message that prevents other uh, receivers from receiving the message gets removed because the message broker notices that either the network connection has failed or a timeout has expired for application two processing the message. And so it releases that lock. And when application two comes back to life, it connects back to the message broker and it's able to download that message again. This time it gets to process it, uh, complete that processing and acknowledge it from the front of the queue. And we talked last time about how important topics and subscriptions are. In that video, we, we learned that a subscription works like a queue. And so like a queue, the acknowledgements work in the exact same way. So each receiving application gets to acknowledge messages on its own subscription. Here we see these messages kind of flowing into a topic, getting split out to the queues, delivered to the receiving application that's processing it, and then it gets to acknowledge that message and have it removed from its subscription, which is effectively like an incoming queue. But we do have to be careful about messages that cause us these problems, that cause us to fail, if that's the reason for our failure. Uh, if there's something wrong with the message and it causes a fatal problem then when, when, whenever we receive it, then we're gonna keep receiving it every time we restart, and that's gonna keep causing us to fail. We call this type of message a poison message, something that keeps triggering the same kind of error in our system. And so we have to do two things to handle these. Number one, we need to try our absolute best to make sure that message processing errors don't result in the failure of our service overall. Uh, and so that one's all about kind of error handling and trying catching and, and, and things like that. But number two, if we manage to stay alive and survive a, a, a poison message being received, we need to decide what to do with that message. If it may contain transaction information, it may contain data updates. There's all kinds of different things that message could contain. And if we can't process it, we don't necessarily know what's in there. So we have to decide what to do with that. How do we handle that? It's obviously a bug that's generated the message. 
So we need to go fix that bug pretty quickly. But that's going to be a future thing that we do that will require some kind of software release. Right now, we've received this message that we can't process, so we have to decide what to do. Should we forward it on to something else, like another topic or another queue? Should we uh, email somebody? Should we raise alerts? Should we you know, set off klaxons and, and start red lights flashing? Uh, we have to decide what to do with that. And this is going to be a new type of business requirement that we have to handle when we do message broken software. Message brokers can actually help us with this. They have a concept called dead lettering. So if a message gets delivered to us repeatedly without success, if the message broker knows that it keeps trying to deliver this message and then it doesn't get acknowledged whenever it's received, it can actually move it out of the, the queue or the subscription for us. Uh, and they create a special place on our message broker called a dead letter queue. So it's a special type of queue that only receives messages that have been taken out of regular queues or regular subscriptions. So this can be super helpful for us because it will help us if we've failed to handle our errors properly and we are still crashing when we receive poison messages, it can help us recover from that situation. But still, uh, there's a message that's been sent but can't be processed and we have to decide what to do with this. We have to make sure we set something up to receive messages from the dead letter queue, knowing they're going to be challenging to process and still do some form of alerting, some kind of uh, telling people that, that there's something going wrong so we can, we can get the system fixed. So that's all for this video. In summary, we learned that uh, message brokers do support reliable messaging. They can keep hold of messages until they've been acknowledged from the message broker. If they aren't acknowledged, then they can be re-delivered uh, to the same receiver or new receiver that connects. But we have to be careful about poison messages. If there's something wrong with the message that causes us to fail repeatedly, we need to make sure we, we don't fail when we receive messages. And we need to figure out what to do with the message if uh, once we've received it and we can't process it. Dead letter cues are a message broker feature that can help but they aren't a total solution. We still need to decide who gets to subscribe to the dead letter queue, what do we do with the messages that end up there, how do we recover our business transactions from those kind of failures. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please hit like, subscribe to, uh, to keep seeing more, hit post notifications if you're super interested. Uh, otherwise you can hit me up on uh, social media, on this is my Twitter and my LinkedIn handle. I appreciate you tuning in and hope to see you next time. Thanks, bye.